Good morning everyone. I've got the whiteboard at the front there because I'm just going through the herd and checking off some numbers. Well I'm actually finding cows. I've booked some in for tomorrow to go to the works. I originally had six and now I've upped it to eight. I'm just going to take a little bit of pressure off that younger herd. Going to pull a few cows, probably the empty cows out of there and put them into here at some stage over the next couple of days. Up you go, that's it, put your bum around. I did actually start going through them yesterday, I didn't have a list, but I was just picking cows that I knew were sort of culls like this one, so I've given her her red dot on the back like that, I've taken her collar off, one, six, eight, no, she's not on, and I needed a couple more to top it up, I think I spray painted five, 67 I think this one might be on the list, yes she is, her collar can come off. also one in here, number 16, this is from the young herd. She just really doesn't milk well and she's got a high cell count, which is a little bit unusual for a two year old, but she can go. Most of the ones I'm sending aren't milking that well, although she's got a nice big udder, so might keep her around a little bit if I have enough numbers if I've got nine on the well, spray paint nine I might keep her she's just milking quite well although she does have a high cell count and that's the reason she's going I've got another one here that one's going because she's just not milking at all she's pretty much drying herself off she's pretty conditioned in the back end so instead of putting milk in the vat she's putting it on her back she's going she's a prime candidate although it's a little bit hard to see now that she has milked out, but she pretty much looked like that before I put the cups on. couple in here that I've painted yesterday, like this one, number 62. See how she's just real round in the back, so she's she's putting it all on her back. And I didn't actually milk her yesterday, but there's just really nothing coming out of her udder. I guess she's not producing much, that would be a better way to say it. And there's one back here as well, I think number two, three, six. Uh, that one right there. You can see I did milk this one yesterday, but it's just, yeah. Nothing really there, so those are two good cows to send away, just purely because they're not really producing much at all. Milking done for another day. When I pull these collars off these cull cows, I'm replacing them with good ones. It's just the way to do it, so eventually they'll all be done. Need to remember to turn them off though. Much better. I've just had a message from Merv to say one of the heifers has slipped. He's not sure which one it is, but he did send through a photo and the calf looks quite big. So I'd say it's probably going to be one of the ones that we AI'd, which is a bit of a shame, but I'll have to wait and see if he can, he can find it, then we'll be able to have a look. I had my vet consult with Martha last week, and that's pretty much where we just go over what's happening for next season like drugs wise do we need to update anything do we need to take anything off is there any changes stuff like that and then if there's any questions i can sort of throw it at her and and get her thoughts about it and, and approach it for for next season but she printed out my cell count list which i do every year to be fair she only printed out the first page and that's all that i really need a couple of years ago i had like about two pages that were just red and I quite like this system, it's like a traffic light system. So this is just based on the cell count. And if we block those columns up, this is from this year. So what we've done, 
I've blanked these ones off because those cows are actually gone now. Uh, but what we do, or what, what I actually look at is uh, come down to a cow like this and see how it's read all the way through. So you go back, one, two, three. The last herd test of last season was high, so she would have got dry cow. The dry cow obviously didn't work. So that is a cow that needs to go. You can see here, that one, that would have had dry cow, didn't work. That had dry cow, didn't work. Or it had a really high one, and then the next two haven't been quite so bad. So these are the cows that I am culling. This number, uh, that's number four. So she needs to go. She's been bad for the last, or this season and last season. So it's um it's interesting and definitely culling pretty hard on this this year. I think if we get rid of these problematic cows, it's going to reduce our mastitis and cell count going forward. I'm not too worried about the cell count. I don't think it needs to reduce much. But I definitely think our mastitis cases can can potentially drop. Like they have been fairly high in the past. I think we're up to about 54 cases this year. And to be fair, there's probably quite a few cows that have had it twice. So it's uh, it skews the numbers a little bit. But that's still what it is. It's still 54. Uh, but I'd like to drop that. I reckon if we could get down to like 10%, I think that would be doing quite well and I definitely think this is the approach to do it and, and it's definitely going to help. I was having a little look because I was curious but this is the last herd date of the 22-21 season so a couple of years ago this column here and anything that's over 150 on the cell count on the last herd test gets dry cowed so if we come down here you can see that one was up near 500 so she would have got it and then the next herd test which is the one you look at for the next season down to 9 so the dry cow worked for a cow like that Again, there's another cow, 357. So it does work, and that's what we want to see, not these cows that, that get it, and then it doesn't work next season. So it, there is a percentage it only works on. I'm not sure what it is, but yeah, it's cool cool to see that sort of stuff. I've just had a phone call from Osborne's to say that they'll be here at 8.30 tomorrow to grab those cows. But around mating time, I always put such a big emphasis on trying to get it right and, and having good results. And... I think it's imperative that I do because it just means at this time of the year I can cull deeper because if you get, get more cows in calf and you have less empties it means you can cull those cows you don't want to instead of having to hold on to them because you don't have the numbers uh, to be able to get rid of them. However I've just drawn up a map for dad tomorrow, I've got something on it at school so he's going to go and put the last of the fertiliser on and those are all the paddocks that haven't had it yet. I'll stick this in here for him. Something there I'll sort it out later. I thought it was only about 16 hectares, which would have been one load, but it turns out it's like 21 that hasn't had it, so he might have to do two trips, but uh, it would be good to get it all on. There is supposed to be quite a bit of rain coming Thursday, Friday. I'm not sure if we're supposed to get heaps, but down the South Island, it's a massive atmospheric river that's coming through, and they reckon they're going to get absolutely nailed. Although, like North Canterbury, they do need it, or in Canterbury, it's pretty dry down there. It's been very dry, or even up and towards Marlborough, and uh, even up into the North Island as well, like around Wellington, just north of Wellington, it's been exceptionally dry around there. So hopefully, hopefully they will get some if they need it. I'm actually going to go and catch up with Dad. We're going to go and sort the crossing out that I put in recently. I just need to go and rewire it. I've got wire there, easy pulls. Staples, I need some more staples, that's what I need. There's actually a few in there. I'll chuck a few more in. It was hard grabbing the staples. I'm getting a good handful of them anyway. Check out the regrowth in there, it's, it's looking absolutely awesome. Cows probably came out about, oh, maybe six days ago, maybe a week call it a week. It's growing like stink. Perfect. I even left the gate open. Try and reuse as much as possible. I've chucked a couple of egg insulators on over there and now what I need to do is pull this out and see how much we've got. Bird's nest. D 
didn't get it on camera, but I just gave my thumb a bit of a whack. <laughs> Called a little crimp, goes through like that, through this other wire. There we go, it's like one of those finger traps. So we'll push it. Grab these easy pulls and Just like its name, it crimps it together and holds the wire. It's all pretty much sorted, but there's a heap of slack in there now, so now I'll go and tighten it up. And I spotted these permanent wire strainers down here, so that's perfect. And it's looking pretty good now. Just the last thing to do though is tidy these up. So these will hold, but the thing to really do is there's one tail. Just like so that so that if it did slip through there this is just going to pull tight it's handy if you can get these as close to that as possible but i think that'll do for me i think that looks pretty good actually one thing i did when i chucked these springs on is i just put a bit of wire through those insulators and hooked it onto there it shouldn't pull out of there and then that's how i join the two uh two wires up together as well so pretty easy way of doing it Looks a lot smarter now. Since they're going tomorrow, I better fix this loading ramp too. I've got a bit of wood here. My plan is that I'm going to dig away this bank a little bit more and see if we can wedge. Uh, we'll see if we can wedge that bit of wood as far down as possible, and then try and get maybe two in there. On that size would be good, and I definitely think that'll sort of help all the all the banks slipping away. Right, round two. I dig out a little bit more and try and get it under that board so it's kind of flush. Actually got Dad to cut it into halves, or well not halves, but now it'll pull from that board to that board, whereas before it was coming up, hitting there, and then it wasn't flush against any of these. Yeah, that's much better like that, I think. Where's that other bit too? Yeah. While we're here too, might as well fix this. When the trucks back up, if they don't back up completely straight, then there's one point that pushes against these and you can see like this is just broken so we'll chuck a new bit of wood hopefully I've got a new, another bit of wood and tidy it up
just happened to be the absolute perfect length and it's nice thick board too that was the old one so it's probably got oh, half an inch on that nice thick board absolutely perfect sleepers are probably quite good for these too but I think that'll be right for now well we've got the drill we might as well do all the rails too makeover this post here as you can see is rotting out that's just what happens to them when they're untreated so they don't need to be replaced at one point but now that all the all these rails have pulled in just need to go around and hit these nails and just so nothing catches it on the way out all the way in that post actually feels a bit rotten down there too because that screw started to spin before it got to the end. Oh yeah, that looks like it's broken or rotted out at ground level. Well, it's obviously the next morning now. I've set up the yard for those cows. I'm just going to go and let them go. Come on. Come on. That's it. That's it. Come on girls, in there. Perfect. Man, this ramp looks good now. I bought some clay over and just chucked it down. Sort of just pack, packed it down with my feet. Look, there's a bit of glass there pick that up and I think it's all right maybe could have done a little bit more and filled it up to that bit of wood but that's kind of how it was before oh and that's perfect timing the truck's just coming down the road now hopefully they don't have to go upstairs again I don't think they will it looks like the trailer's empty so that'd be nice and easy just run them on and good to go Morning, how are you? Not too bad, man. Yourself? Yeah, good, good. Get up. Come on. Get up. Get up. Push her up. Come on, come on, get up, up. Come on, that's it. Have a look. Come on, get up. See how it's there's a bit of a gap down that far end, so that's what I was saying. They don't come directly straight in because it's a bit of a hard ramp. Well, not a hard ramp, but it's a hard turnaround. Like when they turn around, they've got to face up the hill and it's not straight. Like if they were coming in straight through here, it'd be fine. But right about now, when they turn around to get their trailer straight to back and they're, they're not straight there, like where he is. So yeah, it's not too bad. We could bring it around that way just a little bit. It wouldn't take much. Maybe like that much, it would certainly help. I think, I think I might bring some more clay over and build it up to this level so that they don't have to step up they can just come up the ramp and then straight on i'm not sure if it'd make the biggest difference but sometimes it's the small things that matter it's just that when the, when we loaded them then they weren't really eager to go on they they sort of balked at the front it might have been them going onto the truck that they didn't like but normally i don't have a problem they sort of walk just straight up and on so maybe i'll try raise that end just a little bit and and it might 
might work better. But that'll pretty much wrap it up for this video, guys. Thoroughly impressed with how the, the old, new loading ramp looks. Now, that'll live to fight a few more years. But thanks for watching and see you next time.